Okay, so uh, this last two lectures we've def defined what postmodernism is. That's a very specific period in time, of time within the framework of Western philosophy, in which the West has begun to question its own grand narrative of, of, uh, of its own civilization, has begun to look to other uh, cultures perhaps for uh, new ideas. Uh, they've kind of questioned um, some of their um, uh, ideas about uh, civilization due to the fact of the world wars and the atomic bomb and things of this sort. So we find ourselves in this postmodernist time. So now then we look at the word deconstruction. And deconstruction is a, a term that was created by a French philosopher by the name of Derrida. And what Derrida was doing is he's looking at, at the structure of things. And, you know, we, when we look at a, at a house, um, we can see how it's built. We look at the structure of the house. We see that there's framework. There's maybe if it's an adobe house, there's lintels above the door, the window. Uh, the roof has a certain style. And because of the style of the roof, there's certain kinds of reinforcements here and there. And we can see the structure of a house. But when we're looking at uh, abstract ideas or concepts, or social institutions, the structure of those things, while it's there, is not always easy to find, easy to see. And so when we look at the concept of justice, or we look at love, or we look at um, any number of abstract ideas, such as, you know, perhaps even, we could even say art, um, when, when we look at the structure of how these things are, are ordered, and they're ordered by society, Justice is defined and created and structured by society. Art is defined and structured by society. Love is uh, ordered and structured by society. Gender relations is ordered and, and, and structured by society. When we look at those concepts and we want to look at what their structure is, then what we do is we, we begin the process of deconstruction. It means you take it apart. And you take a look at how is it built? What are the things that are are part of this? What makes this thing happen? And Derrida was the guy who, who brought up this idea back in the 1960s. And uh, the main point of this, though, is that when Derrida does his deconstruction, he was looking at the power relations. What are the power relations that create the structure for justice? So if we look at the power relations for justice in... Uh, say in some community like Orange County, California, which is primarily a, a Caucasian community, uh, upper middle class community, we have a definition of justice there that's based around the shared values of the people of that community. But if we go, you know, a few miles uh, to the northeast of there, we find ourselves suddenly in south, south central L.A., and the concept of justice is very, very different. We move to an Indian reservation, and the concept of justice is very different. Or if we just simply move to another country. And we began to understand that as society creates these structures, they also create uh, power relations in them. So when we go back to the Orange County example, the power is pretty equally shared by all of the people there because they're all white and basically upper middle class. And something happens in court, there's not a whole lot of of a struggle. Uh, you just kind of go through the, the, the legal process. But you get to some place like South Central uh, Los, uh, Los Angeles and suddenly there's a power relation. You find that um, there's race as a major issue and that there's different racial groups have different levels of power within the judicial system. And so suddenly those power relations change the structure of of, um, of the concept of justice. And we move on to an Indian reservation, we find the exact same thing. We find that power relations between the federal government and the tribe, and possibly even the state or county, all work together to shape um, the structure and the image of justice. And the result is that some people can get justice and some people can't. So this is, the, Derrida is applying this idea of, of uh, of power in his deconstructions, and so that he would, um, you know, take uh, these ideas and um, and 
analyze the power structures as he deconstructed these ideas. So that's basically what deconstruction and deconstructionist is. Now, in this context, what we're talking about is again, this is very much connected to the po deconstructionism is very much a part of postmodern theory. And so deconstructionism recognizes that um, now we recognize that deconstructionism is a part of the postmodern uh, way of looking at the world. We also realize it's based in power relations. And I think this is very, very important when we look at subjugated knowledge, meaning the indigenous knowledge of tribal communities, indigenous communities worldwide, is often subjugated to scientific knowledge, means placed under. So when you subjugate something, you place it under. And so it doesn't have the same privilege or the same power that the scientific community has. And so, um, so we end up having, you know, indigenous knowledge is considered a subjugated knowledge. And the power relations within um, within the world um, are, is what determines um, what is subjugated and what is not subjugated. And as we look at uh, indigenous knowledge, we see that we're at this particular time in this period of deconstruction where we can take a look at it and say, oh yeah, indigenous knowledge is not being recognized because of the... Uh, because of the um, privilege that science has because of the uh, reliance on numbers and and uh, metrics to do the measurement and that's pretty much the the area of, of the West and their their way of doing things and indigenous knowledge perhaps is you know because of the power relations is, is held at a low in a, in a subjugated position but then we turn around and we find that you know during this period we're also because simply because we're able to talk about it that way, we begin to elevate the authority of of indigenous knowledge, and we begin to take away some of the privilege that science has. So this period of time represents an opportunity for um, to to analyze the uh, the relationship between uh, indigenous knowledge and, and Western science, and this is part of this postmodernist uh, perspective that we're in right now.